Well, David Hogg is back in the news. When he's not busy failing to run a pillow company, he is talking about how guns are bad and gun control is good. Today, they're talking about how the reason that people are buying all these guns is because they are racist, homophobic, somethingophobic, all these sort of terrible acronyms that you could use to describe a person. And that's the reason that we're buying all of these firearms and all these new people are buying guns. So let's watch his video, break it down and kind of discuss some of the things that he says in this absolutely excellent interview done by CNN. Now, before we get going, though, I do want to say thank you to one of the sponsors of this channel, TacPack. They've been a huge supporter of me in the past, and now with me being demonetized, they decided to step up and sponsor yet another video. I want to say thank you to them for providing me with the ability to continue to make these videos and continue to bring more information to you. This video is going to be a little bit more lighthearted. We're just going to kind of discuss some of the issues, and hopefully this is something that allows you to help you better combat some of the potential mis- information that's out there about why people are buying guns, what gun owners are about, and provide better context for who we are. TacPack is an excellent subscription service. If you're looking to get something maybe for a friend or a family member that's into guns, into tactical gear, anything like that, I think TacPack is awesome. What they do is they curate a box that every month you can have sent to someone or to yourself with some cool gadgets. I am absolutely swimming in knives because I have been subscribed with them for a long time now. I love getting knives, gadgets, gear, that kind of thing. And I think it's honestly, it's an, a perfect gift for someone if you don't know what to get them. But you know, they like guns. Maybe sign them up for a few months. If you use the link in the description and the code in the description, that will take you over to their website to where you can find more information and get yourself signed up with a little bit of an extra gift if you're a first time buyer. Now, let's jump into the video. And it's not only gun violence that's going up, it's also gun purchasing. So in just uh, the past year, in 2020, there were nearly 23 million gun sales. Those are rookie numbers. we got to pump those up. I think we might be on pace to beat that this year. Across the United States, that's up 65 percent over the year before. And then in January, OK, after the insurrection at the Capitol, there were two million gun sales and that's up 75 percent. I love how they try to conflate those two things as being related. Because if we look at this as a right-left issue, which I understand the leftists in the comment are going to say that Marx was pro-gun. I don't care. The left in America generally is anti-gun. The right in America is generally pro-gun. It's a Republican, Democrat, non-bipartisan issue. So they try to say that, oh, all these right-leaning people tried to storm the Capitol and tried to take over and form an insurrection. And that's why people bought guns. They're saying that those are the bad people and that they're saying because they did those things, they went out and after that bought all these guns in record numbers. Wouldn't it be the other way around that the people that they're saying are the good people and on their side, shouldn't they be the ones going out and buying guns? I don't see why they're trying to conflate those two issues. Compared to the January before that. So what's that about to you? I think it's about fear. I think it's about the fact that uh, as a country, oftentimes we would rather, unfortunately, turn on each other and point to someone's skin color or point to someone's immigration status or their gender or their sexual identity and, and claim that's the threat when in reality. Maybe you missed it. He just said that the reason that people are buying guns is because they're afraid. And, you know, that might generally be true for a lot of people. A lot of people saw riots in the street all of 2020. A lot of people were afraid that COVID was going to send the world into a tailspin. And a lot of people were afraid and they wanted to have the ability to protect themselves because they didn't know if they could rely on a government or someone else to do it for them. People realize that self-preservation is your own personal responsibility and that while the government and the police might be able to save some people sometimes, generally it's up to you to be your own first responder. Now, then he goes on to say that the reason people are buying guns is because they're homophobic, because they are anti-trans, they're racist, when in reality, if you look at the biggest growth in demographics of gun owners over the last year, it was people of color and other marginalized communities. So which is it? He's seeming to say that all these people are buying guns because they're homophobic or racist. Well, is it the people of color that are buying guns because they don't like the people that are gay? Or is it the gay people buying guns because they don't like the black people? Which is it? Because we both know that that's not the case. People are buying guns because they want to be able to protect themselves. 
marginalized communities are buying guns because they feel the government doesn't accurately represent their interests and won't protect them. It seems like it's quite the opposite to what he's saying here. Um, we should all be working together against the sources of evil that are creating this gun violence and the injustice that promotes this gun violence and gun purchases in the first place. <laughs> I, I think that we can agree with some of what he just said. We should be focusing on solving the root issues. The problem is they're going to attack guns and gun owners instead of the root causes of the issues, which they're claiming that they care about. It's because the reality is what's going to help solve this situation is not somebody buying, you know, another AR-15 or another gun. You're right. I need to buy five more AR-15s. That'll solve it. Uh, it's going to be all of us working together to, to change the political system and the corruption and system of loopholes that has brought us to this place where a corporate, you know, a, a corporate lobby, essentially, like the NRA, is able to put such a, a, a chokehold on our elected officials that they're letting thousands of Americans die every year. I love how he thinks that the NRA still matters and that the NRA hasn't compromised every step of the way and been part of the reason we have some of the biggest gun control in America. He also has the audacity to claim that corporate America and that people putting big billionaires and millionaires putting money into the system is causing some sort of political action that they disagree with, acting like he's some grassroots organizer when he's bankrolled by Bloomberg. Like what? How do you complain about corporate America involving themselves in politics when you are funded by corporate America involving themselves in politics so that they can gain more power. The NRA, when they talk about gun rights, is trying to fight for the individual people to have the ability to protect themselves from a powerful institution like the government from controlling them. Bloomberg and his cronies are trying to fund political action so that people have less power against them simply because they are more afraid of what the nra will do in their next election than whether or not there's going to be another school shooting in their community or an everyday act of gun violence and that has to change gun control doesn't work the assault weapon ban from 94 to 2004 was proven to be ineffective but it seems like they still want to keep going for it acting as if the doj was wrong when they said that it had no noticeable effect on crime but whatever, yeah, maybe we should keep trying the same thing that doesn't work. I think someone smart said something about insanity and trying the same thing and expecting different results, but I'm not very smart. To come together as Americans and realize this isn't about being, being Democrats or Republicans. You know, that, that six-year-old, that 14-year-old, that you know 12-year-old that die every day, they don't have a political affiliation. They're a kid that wants to grow up and they deserve to grow up in peace and security no matter their zip code, no matter the color of their skin or where they come from or who they are. And we have a responsibility as older people to act to protect them so that no, in the future, they're able to be college students and they don't have to come on CNN and talk, talk about, you know, the fact that we're the, a, a country that uniquely has to deal with this situation because we, we don't have to. It absolutely does not have to be this way. I love how he manages to loop in, think of the children. It's not a left-right issue when in reality, the left new gun owners that are on the Democratic side are one of the bigger groups of people buying guns for the first time. We are coming to an agreement, David. You just don't like the agreement that we've determined. We've all determined that the government isn't going to be there to protect us and does not serve our best interests. Therefore, we should have the ability to protect ourselves. Just because you don't like the opinion that both sides are starting to converge on doesn't mean that we're polarizing. It seems like you're the one that's trying to polarize people and say that Republicans bad, NRA bad. Let me know what y'all think down below. Let me know if this is something you agree with, disagree with, what it is that you feel about this, because I think that these interviews that these people do, it's just astroturfing. They're pretending like they're part of some grassroots movement, when in reality, they're massively funded by millionaires and billionaires trying to control you even more than they already do, because the corporate elite already fiddle with politics. So when they're trying to fiddle with politics in a way that takes away their ability to control every single aspect that it is that you do, they aren't the grassroots. The grassroots are the people that want to just be able to leave, be left alone. But maybe that's a politically radical idea in this day and age. Let me know what you think down below. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like on it. YouTube, since demonetization, is going to be a, a difficult landscape to navigate with the whole uh, algorithm and whatnot because time and time again, people see that demonetized channels tend to perform less. So let's try to fight that. Thank you, I would appreciate it. You guys know the drill, have fun, be safe, stay dangerous, peace.
All right. Now, just finished the pre-workout, going to go work out, going to do some starting strength, trying to get my lift numbers back up to where they were prior to this month off that I took while I was in the process of moving. Because people who choose to be weak but have no actual reason, like a disability, whether it's physical or mental, or some sort of other underlying condition, if you choose to be weak, that's on you. Be healthy, be strong, stay, uh, stay positive, live your life to its fullest. Can't do that if you're weak. Thank you.